All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. <clears throat> and thank you all for uh, jumping in and joining this live Confluence Basics training. I'm going to give folks just a few more minutes to pop in, uh, and then I'll get this thing started. Uh, but if you have a moment, if you could just drop into the chat, you know, um, just so I know you all are there. Also, please use that chat for Q&A. Uh, I do respond to as many questions as I possibly can uh, during the live training, and I do also make YouTube follow-up videos detailing every single question, even if it's answered here. Uh, most recently, I published one for the February 15th, and after this, I'll go through, grab all those questions, and uh, have a follow-up detailing every question. Um, so please feel feel free to drop them in there. Hey, Yummy PT, didn't know you could wave uh, in YouTube chat. That's good to know. And is that a whale? I don't use YouTube chat very much, so thank you all for showing me what it can do. <laughs> all right, we are going to get started, um, and I'm going to get started a bit quickly because there's a lot to go through. Um, there's a lot to Confluence basics. We won't get to absolutely everything you might need to know about Confluence, but my goal is to make sure that you have a very good foundation and basics to start with. Oh, hey, Susan. Um, when I first learned Confluence, I showed up at my job. They said, hey, we have a wiki, and they showed me what button to push to log in, and that was it. No one showed me how to make a page. No one explained what a space was or what templates were or how to edit. I had to kind of figure it out. Um, and I joked that I beat my head into the keyboard and eventually it got in there. I hope that none of you have to have that experience. Um, for me, that can work. It can be frustrating and it takes time. But I hope that everyone on this training and any other training I do can skip a lot of that frustration. Um, we're going to start with a quick slide deck. And then I'm going to jump into some hands-on stuff. Um, but first, who am I? Uh, my name's Robert Heen. Um, I've had a career all over IT. I started on the IT help desk in uh, university. I've been the uh, tech support guy who shows up to fix your monitor. I've been a project manager. I've been a traveling consultant. I've been a systems manager, um, network engineering, a very wide range of things. <clears throat> I've been using knowledge bases for many, many years, um, mainly... Uh, Confluence in the past eight years or so. Before that, a little bit of SharePoint, but it's been a really long time. I do have a lot of online training courses, and I'll mention these way at the end. Um, but I really uh, like working with folks to bridge the gap between our knowledge of how a process works and then the mechanical tools of systems like Confluence that can help us be better, but we just have to know how to use them. And that's the gap. We don't get that training, so that's why we're here. Um, for folks who joined, please drop your questions in the comments. I'll do my best to respond to them. Um, this is not just going to be me talking. You know, I'm, I've got the chat up on my screen. I can see everyone saying hi. Uh, hey, Sarah. Hey, Fernando. From Poland. Love it. Um, and I will ask you from time to time, how comfortable are you with a topic? When I ask that question, a one in the chat means you don't know it at all or you're really uncomfortable with it. And a five in the chat means you're super comfortable and any number in between. So when we get to some of these following slides, I might ask, how do you feel about spaces? And just put a one, two, three, four, or five, depending on how comfortable you are. And that will help me figure out what to dig into. A very quick agenda. Again, we're going to go through some of these concepts. And the goal is to help ensure we have that theoretical background. So when I mention space, you know what it means in the context of confluence. So we're going to dig through these six concepts. These six concepts on the left with my fun little brain light bulb thing here. And then we're going to get hands-on. I'm going to go into a Confluence demo instance. Um, one thing I won't cover in here is how to get your own Confluence instance. I have a YouTube video on how to do that, but you can get a free one to go practice in. And I encourage folks to do that, especially if you don't have access to Confluence yet through your job or you know university or workplace. So first question, how comfortable are you with Confluence as a concept of one to a five? Um, Confluence is a virtual space to allow teams to work together. It can be many different things, and depending on the team, it can be expressed or used differently. Some places use it just as a knowledge base. They have a core group of people who build it out and maintain it, and everyone else can just view it. Other places make it a collaboration platform, and everyone can add content and work on it together. Um, some companies use it for customer-facing documentation. <clears throat> 
others make it widely open or narrow. It, it differs, and there's no real wrong way to use it. Um, my preference, a 3.143, Jessica, that's very precise. Um, I'd love to know what the 1.143 is. Um, so when you start using Confluence in a workplace or university or organization, it never hurts to ask, what's the intended use? Because that will help you understand some of the choices made and how it might be set up. Awesome. A lot of ones, twos, and threes. Um, I had no concept of Confluence. I mentioned at the start, I was just told, log in and use it. No one explained anything else about it. Oh, it's pi. Oh, I am bad at math. There will be no math in this training. <laughs> okay. So the first concept is spaces. Um, drop, you know, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. I'm going to go a little bit fast with these. Uh, thank you, Guadalupe. I got, I got, I got there. Um, Confluence uses an agile task board. I'll talk to that once we get hands on Alexander. Uh, I will also answer every question in a follow up YouTube video. So if I don't get to it today, be on the lookout on my YouTube channel for a response video with every single question. In the chat, drop a one to five. How comfortable are you with what a space is? Now, it's just a section of Confluence. I think of co uh, Confluence like a library, and a space would be an area, say, all of the nonfiction, or all of the kids' books, or all of the magazines. It's a way to organize information. Groups will typically organize it by team, so you might have a human resources space for all your HR information, or by project. The new project your engineering team is working on might have their own space where all of their documentation lives. Many companies also allow every individual to have their own personal space, it's called. And that is some place where you can put your own notes. I use them a lot because it's where I can build my own documentation. I don't have to worry about what other people are doing. Spaces also give us some controls over things like access. I'll briefly touch on that, but there will be a follow-on training exclusively on space management, which is something called a space administrator. So if you ever can't do something in a space, you have to go find that space admin to help you out. And it kind of smatterings of one through fives there. <clears throat> okay, again, a one to five, your comfort with pages and blogs. These are the two main building blocks of information in Confluence. And if I'm going too quick, I know I'm throwing a lot out there, drop in the chat, hey, Rob, slow down, please, or back up. Um, again, I want to get through this and make sure we have enough time for Q&A at the end and everything else. Uh, the big difference between these two things, a page will exist in a hierarchy or a page tree. And a blog is more for point in time information. So when I build out an area, um, I may have blog posts that do product updates, or here's what the team did this week. And my pages might be an ordered, a structured way of showing information. The best example I think of is policies. I'll have a policy page and under that, each child policy. Uh, pages for blogs one, I never used blogs until a few years ago. Um, I didn't see the difference. When I get hands-on, I'll show you why I've started using them more. Can you restrict access to your own personal space? Yes, assuming you are the space admin for that space, typically you would be. Pages three, blogs one. Um, the biggest difference with blogs doesn't have access to templates and it'll, it's more focused on point in time information. So my weekly updates are a blog. My how-to documentation would be a page. <clears throat> access. Uh, Carter, you read my mind. We're jumping into access right here. Uh, <laughs> there's three basic levels. The first is instance level access. Your instance is your copy of Confluence. You need a license to get in. So typically, if I work at a company, I'll have a license to get in. Now, you can, the Confluence administrator can set up guest or anonymous access. And this might tie to your question, Carter. This can allow someone who doesn't have a license who's outside of your organization to see your Confluence. This is commonly used for like how-to or help center articles or product updates, but it can be dangerous because it means they can see stuff in your confluence. So groups are fairly, uh, usually fairly cautious about this because they don't want anything sensitive to get out. Assuming you can get into the instance, you would then need space level access. So if you can't see my personal space, you don't have that access, it won't exist. And a space administrator can control that. The next level down is each page or blog post can be restricted. So if I have the ability to add page restrictions in a space, I can say, you can look at this, but you can't edit it. Or maybe I might even say, no one can see it or edit it except for these two or three people. Typically, I prefer Confluence to be open. It's intended to be a source of truth and way to share information. So I don't restrict it too much, but there are very good arguments for locking down certain types of pages, sensitive projects, 
policy documentation, etc. Um, and access really confused me. If you ever have trouble seeing something or getting in, it's either your space admin can help, and you might have to ask around. Your IT team might be able to help you, or your Confluence admin. Only two more slides, I promise. Um, size limitations for blogs or pages. Alexander, great question. I'll get back to you. I have not run into a instance where I have not where I've like run out of space. <laughs> it just keeps going. That said, when we go into it live, I'll explain some things about putting pages together and maybe why you don't want a super long page. Um, one to five in the chat, let me know how you feel about templates. Um, these, I, I didn't know these existed, and then I found them and I was very mad at myself because these will pre-format a page. It can do more than that though. It can include placeholder text. So you can type in the name of a project, it'll get dropped in in multiple places, or maybe a person, or maybe a selection. And it can include information on the page, uh, placeholder explaining what to do. So if someone else goes to edit or use the template, they'll be prompted about what should go in here. Jennifer, I see a zero. Um, I was right there with you. No worries at all. Um, someone in the last training said, I'm a total noob with Confluence. And that was great that that person showed up and said that. We all start somewhere. Um, so thank you all for showing up. Renee, a five. Love it. Um, and then as we learn, those numbers change. It's great to see. Last slide is on, I can't tell if that's a negative four, Susan, or just a hyphen. I'll assume it's a four, though. Uh, last slide here is collaboration. Um, again, drop that one to five on collaboration. Uh, but Confluence isn't just a place where one person goes and puts everything in and everyone else looks at it. It's intended for other people to go in and help build and help create and help make stuff. At the basic level, you can comment on pages and blogs. And there's three ways to do this. You can comment on the whole page, on just a section or even a word. Um, you can at mention folks. So doing the at symbol shift to and their name will alert them, send them a notification. I do that a lot, asking for questions or, hey, I think this is incorrect. And you can also uh, easily share information, just copy and paste the URL, and I'll show you this when we go live. Or there's a big blue share button, you can just hit that and that will email someone the page. Last, there's collaborative editing, which again, I didn't know existed until someone popped into the page with me. But if you've used tools like Google Documents or some others where two people or three people or more can go in and edit all together, Confluence also supports that. You can have up to 10 people on a single page at a time working together. I use this a lot because I have a lot of teammates who don't sit in the same office as me. So folks from Seattle or New York or Dublin have to jump in and work together. Once a page is created, if folks have access, they can also help edit and update it. So it doesn't have to be real time. It could be asynchronous or separate points. Okay. That was a lot of talking and you just staring at slides. Now is the fun part. I'm gonna pop over to a Confluence instance. So again, this is a copy of Confluence. There is a way to get a free one. I've got a whole YouTube video explaining it. If you don't have access, I recommend you do that. Um, and if you happen to have Confluence at your organization, I'll talk about this more at the end, pop in and look around. Be careful about pushing delete buttons and things, but it's hard to hurt it. And what we're looking at here is my homepage. We can see I've got some information, pick up where I left off. So pages I've recently been on. I can see down here pages I'm following might have updates. Uh, there's some admin news that Confluence pipes in. Uh, honestly, I don't use this particular page all that much. I'm very comfortable going into a specific area, but I can always, always, always get back here by clicking on home, or I can click on the Confluence logo in the top left. So if I ever don't know where I am, I get lost, I get stuck, you can always come back to home. Yummy, thank you so much for asking that. I always forget. We are looking at cloud confluence. And you can tell it's cloud if you look very, very carefully up in the URL. It's got some name, creators-demo-1.atlassian.net. That .atlassian.net tells me this is an instance of confluence that Atlassian manages. I don't have to worry about the servers. I don't have to worry about patches. I don't have to worry about uptime. Atlassian does all of that. Many groups use confluence cloud. The other big one you might run into is called Data Center or DC. I don't think I've ever honestly used that one, um, so I can't speak too much to it, but this is cloud. On the left here, I've got some menus, uh, but first I'm going to explore the top menu bar because this will show up in many places in Confluence. Home brings us back here. The recent menu is very, very useful. It keeps track of where you've been and what you've been doing. 
I always forget what I've worked on most recently because I work in a lot of places, but this just keeps a running list of stuff. You also notice a small star icon. You can star pages. It's kind of like bookmarking them to more easily find them later. And there's a whole starred menu that keeps track of those for me. I tend to do this with important policies or pages I'm working on or need to keep an eye on because it makes them much easier to find. The worked on menu is also very, very useful. Again, I'm in Confluence a lot working in different places and I forget what I last worked on. Um, so I use this to quickly find it. There's also created by me. So pages I've created. And then one that just shows drafts. Once I create a page, I'll explain drafts a little bit more. But these are pages that haven't been published. They're just kind of floating around out there. It's I try to make it a best practice to double check these every week or so, just in case I forgot to publish something that's useful. Uh, but you can see I've got a pretty long list of drafts I've forgot about. My spaces menu keeps track of any space that I happen to have uh, either starred or been in recently. I can also view all the spaces in the instance. So if I don't know where the HR space is, I could click this to see a list or search and I can create a space. I can do this because I'm a Confluence admin. I have, you know, very high level permissions. Um, most people won't see this. Yummy, your point about uh, data center and cloud being similar, they are very similar. The difference is a organization may choose not to upgrade their data center. So it might be a few versions behind. So there is a chance and a possibility that if you're using data center, it's a slightly older version. So th some things may not look identical, but all of the core features, the concepts of pages and spaces, how to edit, how to do things should be, if not identical, as close as they could be. In Confluence, an admin can set up space, uh, sorry, teams. So you might have a team called engineering and that's everyone who is on engineering. That makes it easier to add mention and do things. There are apps that can be installed. There's a whole marketplace I'll talk about at the end where companies make add-ons, kind of like the app store for your phone to Confluence to make it more useful. And then a templates button. We'll explore templates when we make a page. There is this very inviting create button right here at the top. Personally, I don't use this. I find it's confusing where the page I create goes. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like to push this. It's not a bad button to push. You just have to understand it's going to drop the page at the top of your space. And I'll, we'll see that visually in a moment. The last thing up here is a search bar. This is something else many people don't know about. And one of the biggest challenges folks have with Confluence is finding stuff. Um, they don't know their search. So if I just come in here and type, you know, I'm looking for information on Confluence, hopefully it comes up to the top. Now, there is a lot of complaints about search not working, and I'll put that in quotes. A lot of that can deal with how pages are set up. This chat won't get into that too much. I'm working on some follow-up training and information on that, and I have a whole Udemy course explaining how to set up a knowledge base for success that can help with that particular challenge. But the basic search is pretty powerful because you can also filter it by who made the page, when was it updated, by a space, and there's even more in-depth searching under advanced search that lets you do things like what type of information, what specific labels. So just know that search exists and it can be very helpful. And please tell everyone you work with that it exists. Uh, Vish, I'll show you how to archive a page after we create a test one. You can archive a space and a page that takes them out of the page tree and kind of hides them. They're not gone forever. Alexander, I wouldn't recommend just a single space um, because the type of content we put into Confluence is going to exceed the scope of one space. For example, I won't only ever have HR information in Confluence, I'll also have stuff about onboarding and recruiting and IT and how the coffee machine works and where to get a good bagel, all of that stuff. And it might not all live in one area. So talking about spaces, I'm going to open one up. I've got a few down here that I've already used. I'm going to open up maybe the top one. And hopefully I picked the right one that has something in it. I picked the wrong one. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to my space menu. And this was a very silly thing I did. I gave them very similar names. So when we think of naming things, they should have a very uh, precise and simple name that just tells someone what's in there. I should probably rename one of these so I know which one to use when I do training. So this is a space and you'll notice something's changed. Everything on the left here is different and everything in the middle is different, but our bar at the top remain the same. So we still have that home button, the recent, et cetera. But now we have space specific information going down the side. And this is where I spend most of my time in a screen similar to this one, where I can see all the content in a space. If I click on blogs, I'll only see blog posts. 
And we can see here they're laid out chronologically. So I can see when they were posted. Again, it's a point in time type of information. But everything we see here might differ in your space based on what your admin is set up. So they can turn on or off any one of these so you just don't see them. So you might not have calendars, for example. If you're a space admin, you'll have this space settings gear. So you might not see it in most spaces. Most of the time we won't have that access because we don't need it. We might just need to go in and make content and we don't have to worry about administering things. One of the more mind blowing things that I finally figured out was shortcuts. Um, a lot of the content in Confluence is a page or a blog, but here you can actually link out to other resources. So I could link out to, in this case, this is my blog. So I don't have to have just a page in Confluence. I might have a link to a report or into Salesforce or some other system that I can get into. You can also shortcut to uh, other pages. This can be useful if folks on your team constantly need to go to one thing to get information. And I can add, or add them by clicking the plus and then remove them under more actions. The bottom under content is where everything in the space lives. So most of the stuff in a space will be a page and will live in this content tree, it's called. If you look very closely, you'll see some of these have a little arrow and some of these have a little dot. The ones with the arrow have children pages or pages created under them. And this is the hierarchy I mentioned way at the start of the training, where each of these are child pages of this parent. So this is the power of the, the page tree. I can group information by like stuff. In this case, my Confluence Basics information lives under Confluence Basics. So someone coming to this space would look at it and go, oh, I'm interested in Confluence Basics. I'm going to click on it. It would expand the side and they'd see whatever's on the page. So to access the page, all you have to do is click. It'll open up. You'll see anything on there. And I mentioned earlier comments. Up at the top on a page, I'll have this nice little menu bar. I can edit it if I have access, which is the pencil. I can click on the thought bubble to see comments. The little lightning bolt thingy is automations. I won't talk too much about those, but those are automated tasks that can happen in Confluence. I can star or unstar the page, and I can watch the page. Watching is a great way to keep up to date on what happens. If something on the page changes, someone comes in and edits, adds, removes data, you'll get a notification. So I recommend folks go through and watch pages that they think are interesting or useful. And if you have access, you can also add other watchers. I do this a lot for teammates of mine who might not know about the page, but I think they'll need it. So you can just come in and click on it and then type in their username and have them be added to the watch list. They can come in later and get rid of it if they don't want it to. Now on this page, I can see this funny yellow color. That's telling me there's a comment right on that word. So if I click on it, I'll see that the comment, and this was some user named Robert Heen saying, I think this is misspelled. So this is one way to collaborate on a page, even if I can't edit it, even if I don't control it. I can also link directly to it. Anywhere you see these two little chain icons, you can link directly to that thing. And when we edit the page, I'll show you headers, but you can also link directly to a header, another great way to get someone right to what they need. Now, if I want to add a new comment, I can select text and I'll have the comment option. I can also, if I mouse over a block of text, you'll see this little bubble show up. This will select the entire bit of text. So I can call it a whole block if I need to. And then also way down at the bottom, there's a comment box to comment on the overall page. The only challenge I see with comments is they just don't get answered and they get forgotten about. So as I see comments, I do my best to go in and answer them or help close them out. But now we're going to create a page. Two ways I can do it. I can click create. This will make a new page under whatever page I'm on right now. So if I click create and go to page, it's going to put a new page under Confluence Basics. The reason I don't like to do that particular button is because many folks I work with don't realize that they're going to make a new page under Confluence Basics, and then they get frustrated that their page has disappeared. So there's nothing wrong with pushing it. Just be aware that whatever page you've selected will be the new parent of the page that you've created. If you're at the top of your space, so if I go back to the, this page, I'll make a new top level page in the space. So I'd make something way at the top with no children. 
I prefer to mouse over a page and then click the plus, and this lets me make a child directly under it. So I'll just push create. You may have more or less options than I do. I've signed up for a beta feature called database, but there might be other things depending on your setup. And I'll just click make a page. And here is my editor. I'm gonna pause for a sec. I saw some questions come flying in. Mint ice cream, that sounds good. Um, can subtree or pages be exported? You can export uh, pages, I believe is PDF and a few other formats. Um, however, it depends on your settings, uh, the settings that your Confluence administrator has set up and any, if there's any like access restrictions. Can we integrate Teams chat? Awesome questions, Vish. Um, that might be something to look into in the marketplace. Again, companies and groups have made apps that tie into Confluence to help connect them. Out of the box, Confluence does talk to Jira service management that uh, will help deflect tickets. It will show knowledge base articles when someone tries to put in something. Um, I don't know, I don't happen to use Teams, so I don't know exactly, but I'll look that up for you. And can we import articles or Word docs? Uh, we can import at least one at a time. I haven't tried to do a bulk import, but up in the top right in the templates pane, there's this little import menu. And I can import a Google Doc, a Word Doc, OneDrive. Um, it's a great way to pull in an existing piece of documentation, and it'll just drop it straight into Confluence. So my goal when I use Confluence is to have as much content in Confluence. I don't want to be sending people all over the place. I don't want to have them have to go into Google Drive to search for things. So I try to import as much as I can. Um, so templates. This menu pops up if I lose it. I can click on the more actions in the way top right, these three little dots. And I can click on templates and import doc. And I have a few options. Templates live in a space. So each space comes pre-populated with 130-ish templates from Confluence. And these just are in there. This is a lot of templates. Honestly, I ignore most of them. Um, if I were being really on it, I would go through and remove the ones I don't need. For me, it's not worth the time though, because the search is so good. I can just click in this little search bar and type in my how-to article. Oops. I can type in how to find my how-to article, and I can also star templates that I use a lot. And that gives me a little quick filter right here at the top, my templates that will show me just the things that I've starred. So I recommend that folks look through templates, find one they really like, and you can mouse over it to see what it will do. And then you just click on it and it drops it right on the page for you. Um, helping with meeting notes, Jessica, I actually use a template in Confluence. I'll go back to templates real quick and I'll just type in meeting note. There's a whole bunch of different meeting note uh, templates in here. I think this is the one I use most frequently. Um, I've modified my own personal one a little bit, but I tend to just drop in meeting notes into Confluence in a page tree called like meeting notes or under the name of the project so it's in there. We can make changes to templates. I have a training at the end of March on how to effectively use templates that will walk through everything we can possibly cover about templates in an hour, including how to edit, make new ones, share them, all of that. To edit the page once it's here, oh, actually let me close this out and I'll make a blank page and just show editing without any templates or anything. So I'll just click my plus. You don't have to use a template. So I can just go in and give this page a name. It has to have a title. Everything else is optional. Please put content on your pages. Don't just leave a title. <laughs> um, but my bar at the top has changed a bit to show all of my editing options. These are the same in pages and in blogs. I can't do font sizes, but I can do header sizes. This was a little bit frustrating at first, um, but I found it to be honestly pretty useful because it helps keep me focused on the content and not exactly the font size. And the headers will talk to or integrate with something called a macro, which is a little piece of functionality I can add to a page. I can click this plus in the top, or I can type in a forward slash on my keyboard. And these are all the stock macros in Confluence. You may have more or less if your company has any add-ons, but I'm gonna add one to make a table of contents right quick. 
And this automatically generates this table of contents that includes links based on any of the headers in here. Uh, yes, yummy, this will be recorded and available almost as soon as we're done. And again, a follow-up Q&A video will go through everything, every question and answer them. So if you have to drop, absolutely zero worries. There's also another live training next month. So this macro automatically builds a table of contents. I won't go through every macro, there's a ton, but please take time to look through these and just see what might be useful. Some of them will do things like pull in Jira tickets or talk to other systems. So your page can go beyond just static content and include other things. I can also bold and italicize text, you know, some pretty standard editing options, change the uh, alignment, text color. Uh, I can add attachments, so videos, etc., can be dropped in. Oops. And then I have an at mention button. I can just type in the at symbol or I can click that. I can add emojis and tables. And then add sections, they call them. So this would be the or layouts, the closest we can get to columns in Confluence. So this would allow comments, content to be in column format. Oops. Now to make this page public, I could just click publish. If I wanted someone to help me edit it, I could just copy this URL and I'll do it in a very silly way to demonstrate. And I'll just paste it in the next tab over. But what we're going to see are two, hopefully, there we go, are two Roberts in the page. Now, I shouldn't collaborate with myself. I should give this to someone else. Um, but this now lets me see where the other person is so we can edit the page together. Once we're done editing, I can just click Publish. I'll be prompted if there's any access restrictions I want to place on it. So only some people can see it or edit, only some people can edit or it's just public. And then I'll publish and I'll have a page. I'll be brought to the live page and it will show me where it is in the page tree. And if I need to, I can click and drag to move it around. So maybe if I want it under a different parent, I could drop it. Or if I want it higher up, I can move it to where I need it. And if I click on this more actions, I have options like archiving and deletion. This is based on my permissions in the space. I might not have this. I can star, edit, rename, etc. Whew. Okay. I'm going to pop over to the slide deck again real quick to talk about what's next. And then we're going to go straight back to question and answer. Um, but additional resources. Atlassian has an online community. Uh, it's a great message boards, a forum. Go check it out if you haven't. You can get a free account. You can see other people's questions. Ask your own. It's a great way to get access to experts and to get help with what you need. They also have a lot of great free training beyond these live ones. So you can go back and watch recordings or get certified, that kind of thing. If you have Confluence at your organization, go explore it. Go see, talk to your admin or go try and make a page or go try to edit. It's a lot about comfort and just understanding where everything is. Once you get over to that, it's much easier to use. You can also get a free instance. I've included a video, I'll include a video on that on my YouTube. Um, and check out other content. I'll have a follow-up Q&A on this. You'll have this recording. You'll have other creators, other people on platforms like YouTube um, that can help you learn stuff. And then talk to other folks. Uh, one of my jobs, we had someone who was very, uh, knew a lot about Confluence, so I became a great friend uh, with them. And we still chat and talk about things not Confluence, but he taught me a ton about this system and how to think about it. I also have some Udemy courses. Check out that UR code that cover things like knowledge-based fundamentals and setting them up uh, and some other topics. Um, so there's other, again, other ways to learn this beyond these live trainings, beyond that uh, community. Uh, and the bottom left is my contact information, my uh, YouTube link, and my blog. Feel free to send me an email with questions, drop comments on things. I'll do my best to respond. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the chat. I know I missed some things, um, but please keep asking those questions. And again, I will be going through every single question and having a follow-up Q&A response video to make sure you get answers. Um, is it possible to edit straight markup sources? Alexander, I don't know if what you're asking there is can we edit the Confluence page from like code or if we can add markup to a page. If it's the second question, we can add like code markup. Um, I don't know if we can edit Confluence directly from code though. Um, that might be possible on data center. I will take a look and get back to you. Can I see who meet, made changes? I'm very sorry, I misread your n name initially. I thought that was Beard of Money. Um, sorry, Bordo, I hope I'm saying that properly. 
Um, I'm going to pop over to, not that, back into Confluence. Um, Confluence tracks changes to pages under what it calls ver uh, page or version history. And I always use the wrong name for it, but I'm going to find an older page. So here's my Confluence basics. I'll open up my more actions, this menu in the top, and then I'm going to click on page history. This will keep a running tally of every change made, who made it, and when. So in this particular case, it's a bad example because I'm the only person in here. So I made every change, but you can see I created it back in December. I could restore it back to that, and I have these permissions in the space, or I could even delete the version. I can click on it to see it, but I can also compare versions, which is kind of cool. I can pick any two of these and click compare, and it will show me the differences. So it will show me in green stuff that's new, in red stuff that was deleted, and then if there's any formatting changes, any blue. Um, so hopefully that got to your question. Are you able to share specific pages within a space to an internal guest? Uh, Carter, that depends on if guest or anonymous access has been enabled. So if we think of our access levels, the highest level is the instance. Our instances are controlled by a Confluence administrator, and this is someone who manages the whole instance with licensing and other things. Um, I'm working through some information on like best practices for that, but if they don't allow guest or anonymous access, someone who doesn't have a license, you can't share it. If that access is turned on, it is possible to share pages or parts of a space with anonymous or guest users. It can, however, be, I'll call it dangerous, because you may end up giving them too much information. Typically, what groups would do is have a whole space that is just customer facing that someone manages to make sure nothing sensitive or non appropriate for customers would get out. <laughs> awesome. Love these questions. Uh, I'm just going to pick one here. Weep. There'd be more than one instance at your organization. Um, I have not worked at an organization that has multiple confluence instances. Um, typically what an organization would do if they need to keep things separate is they would have spaces that are locked down or access restricted. So only the people who should be in them can see them. If you don't have access it, and you search for it, it will say this page doesn't exist or you don't have access. So the person doesn't know if it exists or not. That said, I could imagine a, a sensitive enough environment that would necessitate to. I personally have not run into one. And I'm thinking something almost out of like the movies where it's, you know, the CIA has to have very separate things. But personally, I haven't seen it. Typically, the companies I'm at have one instance that is broken up via space. Do, do, do. Oh, YouTube link in the chat. Sure. I'm going to add a space right before the at symbol because it do usually doesn't like uh, hyperlinks, I think. And then I'll try it again. Okay, keep those questions coming, please. Again, I will be having a response video about all of these. <laughs> uh, can we keep content of the pages in GitHub or version control system? Um, good question, Alexander. I don't know. I don't know offhand. I will look, at, look that up and check in. That said, Confluence keeps that page history for you. So I'm unsure of the use case of wanting to keep like my Confluence pages in another system because I have this versioning right here. I can revert to this. I can delete or restore these. It is not GitHub. Like it is not going to have the, the flexibility and features that a dedicated version control system would have. But in my experience, this has been more than adequate to manage the version control and history of pages or blogs that I happen to have worked with. Uh, can we encrypt comp yeah, Confluence content stored in database tables? This is a question about data center. Uh, Vish, great question. I'll have to look that up for you. Um, I don't know offhand that I don't want to give you uh, improper information. Okay, going to go back up and see other questions. Archiving. Okay, so we're in Confluence. Um, now, ideally, Confluence is kind of a living thing. We don't just want to set up Confluence and walk away. Um, one of the biggest challenges I see with Confluence adoption or people actually using it is teams will spend a lot of time building it out and then they, they kind of put their hands up and then leave. And then all the information is great at a point in time and then over time it gets stale and old. 
So really, we should be going into Confluence regularly to update it, to examine and determine, do we still need this Feb 28 training page? Is this useful? Now, one way to tell if people are using it, you can see the very small icon, but this will tell you how many people have viewed the page. So Confluence is also going to help track page views. And I can click on this right here to see what are the analytics. Now, again, bad example, there's only one. But if over time I see pages that aren't being looked at, I might ask myself, hmm, should I archive this? Should I put it in a back room where people aren't going to find it unless they need it? Now, what archiving will do is it's going to remove this page from my page tree. So I'm going to go to my three-dot menu. And again, I have permissions in the space to do this. So you might not see this. But if I push this button, Confluence is going to basically ask me, are you sure? And I'm going to give it a little note explaining why. And this is just a quick little one-liner to explain why it's archived. And then I'll push archive. Confluence is going to think. And then that page has vanished from my page tree. It's no longer taking up space where someone's looking for information. If I have access to the archive, I can click view in archive and I can see, oh, that page is in there. So my Feb 28 trainings is right here. I can mouse over the note to see why. I can see who did it. Again, this is something a space administrator would handle. And if I need to, I can actually restore it or I could delete it. Deletion is more of a permanent option. Deleted pages can be restored unless they've been purged. So you really have you know two or three chances. You can archive something, you could then delete it, or you could go straight to deletion. But once it's purged, it's gone. So typically groups I work with, I encourage archive off older content that you don't really need. It can still be pulled out and it can still show up in search. Oops, forgot I can't draw over that menu. If I go to my advanced search, I'll just type in Feb 28. And it didn't find anything. Now under more filters, I can also show archived content. So if I try to search for something that I know I saw that doesn't show up in search, I might go, ooh, maybe it was archived and here I found it. So this is a great way to pull things out of kind of the front of Confluence so it doesn't clutter things up, it doesn't confuse folks, but it still can be available. You can also archive an entire space and this requires the space admin to go in, but this does something similar where it removes the space from my list of spaces, but still allows someone to go in if they absolutely have to get at it in order to do something with it. All right, additional questions. Do, do, do. Oh, personal notes. Um, many organizations allow what is called a personal space, uh, and that's what we've been working in. It's just your name. So my name and confluence is Robert Heen. This is my personal space. Every other user in this instance of confluence has a space that's just named their name. <laughs> Um, but this is where I will keep my own personal notes or documents I'm working on that maybe I'm not yet ready to publish. Depending on how the organization sets it up, your personal space may or may not be visible to others by default. So you might want to ask your Confluence admin or, excuse me, about how it's set up. But personal spaces are a great place to one, explore Confluence because it's all your stuff. But I also use it to keep running notes on meetings I'm in or to keep, um, you know, my own for performance management cycles, that kind of information. Or if I'm building out something that I'm not quite ready to share, I'll build it out here, maybe ask someone else to look at it. And then I can move the whole thing by clicking the three dots and move and move it into another space once it's ready. So instead of having a separate instance for my own personal notes, I'd use my own space that I control, that I have access to, where I can see and do that. Ooh, Alexander, good question. What do we do if someone accidentally puts sensitive information in Confluence? Um, that's kind of the, the challenge with Confluence. It is It can be permissible, and someone may make an honest mistake and go, whoopsie. Uh, I'm going to open up my Confluence basics and pretend at some point I had put credit card information or someone's passport photo or something sensitive that really, really, really shouldn't be in here. Um, I'll go back to my page history. And I'd want to find the version where it was entered. So let's pretend it's version 5. 
I could click on version 5 and I would see, oh, here is sensitive information that shouldn't be here. If I go back to the version history and I'm just going back in my browser, it was version 5 I didn't want, I think. I have this nice little delete button. And this will remove that version from the history. It's gone. Um, again, this is hard to see in here because the changes are all made by the same person. Um, but that is one way to strip out that information. So in an extreme case, you could go through and find every version that had that sensitive thing that I pick on credit card information and just delete all those versions and it wouldn't be here anymore. Um, this might require working with a space or confluence admin just in case you don't have that direct access, but you can go through and delete version histories. In an absolute extreme case, you might need to wipe out the whole page. So talk to an admin who can delete it and then purge it to make sure it's really gone. Make a brand new page that's clean and then only put the appropriate information. Oh, that was a lot of talking. Thank you all so much for uh, dropping in. Um, I'm considering making this basics a little bit longer because there's so much basic stuff that I feel folks need to be successful. Um, please check out these other resources. Please keep engaging with Confluence. There's a lot of help out there. There are a lot of great ways to learn this. The biggest challenge I see is people just don't know where to go for help or how to do something they need to do. So please keep checking out these live trainings. Check out you know, YouTube. I'll have those Q&As. Um, and please pop into Confluence and just start exploring it. Um, I'm going to leave it open for a few more minutes to catch additional questions. Um, but again, thank you all so much for popping in. I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you get a survey follow-up, please let me know what you thought. Your, you know, your feedback, constructive and complimentary, is very helpful. Thank you, Alexander. Um, Jennifer, um, do you admin need to create a personal space? Depending, uh, if personal spaces are turned on by your instance admin, you will just get one when you're added. Um, now. Some people will have the ability to make new spaces beyond that, but most people won't. So you might have to go to like your IT team to help you out. Can we set up an alert to review content? Uh, Susan, the awesome question. Automations are relatively new to Confluence, but you can have them take action if pages are older than a certain date, things like that. Uh, and again, I'll be grabbing all of these questions into a follow-up video and I'll answer every single one as best as I can. Thank you, Fernando, for jumping in. Thank you, S. Garden and Lynn. Thank you, Susan. All right, folks. We got a few more moments, but please drop those last minute questions. I might not answer them right now, but again, there will be a follow up that details all of them for you. <laughs> um, Board, join the club. Um, the more I learn about Confluence, the more I realize I need to learn more. Um, but I'm glad you're here, and please be on the lookout. I'll have more targeted trainings as well. So again, templates will be in the end of March, and we'll do an in-depth dive just in how to manage and use templates. Thank you, Gene. All right, folks, one more moment. I'm not seeing any new questions, but last chance, last call. Awesome. Well, thank you again all so much. I hope to see you again in another one of these trainings, whether it's recorded or live. Uh, and have a great day, afternoon, or evening.